appointed governor of the Irongo region, Neville Andre, is a young man who has taken on big problems that have probably persisted for longer than he's been alive. But the brother is out there doing the most for his constituency. When I uh, came into this position, uh, it's a little over a year ago, uh, in April last year, um, this region was already in epicenter. And uh, I had now to deal with uh, the a region, which is uh, the first epicenter of uh, COVID-19 in the country. Uh, also, the region that uh, recorded the first uh, community infection for COVID-19, and also the first uh, fatality you know, uh, related to COVID-19. So it was a region that uh, also received the longest or experienced the longest uh, lockdown uh, from all the other regions. Yeah, I can remember when I had to come and report for duty, I had to get a permit to come into into the region. So it was a, a, a tough year, uh, but uh, we were mainly just focusing on uh, COVID-19 and how to keep the spread of COVID-19. Um, how we did that, uh, it was uh, a collaborative effort um, uh, where we sort of uh, pulled in all sectors. Uh, private sectors, uh, public sectors, and all the stakeholders. And that is how uh, we managed to sort of uh, address the situation, the issues, uh, uh, you know, be it with uh, the hospitalization, hospital facilities, and so on. Uh, it was a, a joint uh, collaborative uh, effort that uh, made us uh, come through uh, out of uh, this situation. Of course, uh, other than the, uh, the COVID-19, you had uh, also, the um, um, the fishermen, ex fishermen, uh, that we also had to deal with, uh, and then also the, it came the, the the fire that broke out at uh, Tuala Roca. Um, so these are the things that uh, now uh, we mainly part of our our focus as, as, a, as, as a region. Yeah. How? Effectively, effectively, do you think you've dealt with Otwea and Tuala Yeah, um, the area that where the fire broke out uh, of course was Otwea, I mean Tuala Roca. And then um, what then happened was that um, uh, we had 153 um, shakes that uh, burned down. Um, and we sadly lost one baby in the fire. Um, and all those uh, people that, of course, it's not. It was not the whole area of uh, Taroka that uh, that uh, uh, that burned down. There, there were still some other uh, checks that uh, that remained or houses that remained. Um, so what then happened was that we um, government came in and saw that uh, there needs to be a, a a a this situation is an emergency disaster. So um, uh, uh, the cabinet directed that uh, this be addressed. I mean, uh, addressed as a emergency a risk. I mean, emergency situation, and um, uh, came in to assist with uh, the facilities like the tents, uh, uh, food, and also invited other stakeholders uh, like the Red Cross and also local. Uh, people, uh, companies, and so on, to come on board and help alleviate the situation of uh, of, 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 of the people in in, in Otre- now in Otrea, because they are moved, they moved to the area and also the houses that they, that have been built. We met recently, and I was able to ask him about some of the issues that we had uncovered in his region that have featured on the show in recent weeks. In this week's episode of It's a Wrap, we feature an exclusive interview with the governor on the sluggish pace at which the Tuala Loka or Toya residents are being housed in those little bondocks cabinet approved for them, the corruption that has been exposed in the allocation of those bondocks, and a response on the fact that those bondocks are yet to be electrified, amongst other issues. Check this out. People, uh, the, the assistant was, because first is that where they were in, in the Tuala Loka, it's an area which they, let, they grab land, um, and of course, people want land, they want uh, housing. Um, and unfortunately, fire broke out, and that's what happened. Um, and 
uh, we then looked at um, uh, how the government then came in to say how do they assist uh, from the situation where they are to at least uh, to give them uh, shelter. Um, a budget was put um, uh, uh, first to clear the area or to identify the area and uh, put up uh, um, uh, services into, into in that area and also put up houses. Now, <coughs> the, the, it was quite uh, expensive because first the servicing was uh, uh, quite uh, long and also expensive to put in uh, water and electricity into, in, into that area. And then also at the same time that uh, with the little funds that uh, we received from government, we needed to see how do we uh, 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 include everybody into, into, that, into, into the houses. So it is, um, first is that when you look at the, the, the houses, look at the air size. Uh, the air size is uh, 300 square, each square, each air. And uh, uh, what then also is included in the air is that uh, there is already approved extension of two rooms onto that air. So people want to extend, they need not to pay for, uh, you know, uh, um, apply for an extension. They can just put up and then uh, build the, uh, the, the, the extension of it. Uh, but of course, uh, and again, uh, from the shake bed, which was uh, quite small, to an air land, and a bit of uh, you know you have sanitation also that is put in there. They have their own toilet. They have uh, um, the um, uh, kitchen. Uh, you know they have of course that one bathroom. Uh, so it is at least uh, that to be given that is at least you are starting off uh, with, with, uh, with something that you did not have, they did not have, and they are assisted. Um, um, what is then to be given is that uh, they only paid for the connection of uh, the water, to, uh, the, the meter uh, to, to their plot. Um, and that is, I think, uh, uh, a gesture that, I mean, of course, it's uh, what needs to be done by uh, uh, leaders or services that needs to be given to our, our citizens, but uh, it's, it's better from coming from really a a, 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 a corrugated iron shed and so on. And without water, without, they do not have water, they do not have sanitation and all this, but now they have that in, 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 in their houses. According to the Swapo Manifesto of 1989... Tea, anyone? Housing is one of the forms in which racial stratification of our society has found its most appalling expression. Discriminatory and racist practices remain firmly entrenched. Black workers in urban areas live in squalid conditions of labor compounds, single quarter housing, and in segregated ghettos. The housing conditions of the overwhelming majority of rural blacks are equally appalling. The often corrupt administrations of the so-called second-tier authorities did nothing to improve the housing conditions for the masses. A Swapo government will therefore make the provision of adequate housing as one of its top priority. Now, to my mind, when we talk of servicing land as an emergency response for fire victims to get housed, then surely the water and electricity situations are more sorted. This was not the case with Otoya houses. I put this to the newly elected governor, Neville Andre. Yeah, you see, um, the, the issue is that um, government is providing the funds and the procurement is uh, done by the municipality. Um, and uh, what then happened is that, uh, first was that uh, the, there was services put in place for the sewage and water. Uh, and then uh, the electricity was not included. Uh, we then had to call the municipality in and said we need to put in electricity into those. Um, then uh, uh, we, 
with the exemption, we also uh, applied to the Ministry of for Finance to exempt the procurement process so that at least we can put the electricity services uh, as soon as we can, uh, which now, of course, uh, uh, municipality um, managed to get it and, you know, they were supposed to do to, to have this uh, already in May, uh, but uh, unfortunately we uh, did not have that uh, from the municipality, but uh, fortunately now we have it and they are in the process uh, of, of, of putting up. And that was, that is the only delay. But of course, um, uh, just maybe to give you a, a, a background or inspect, a, a perspective into in terms of the houses itself. Now, when, um, like I said, 153 houses were uh, actually shacks burned down. Um, now, what then happened, and that is also uh, some of the things that uh, delayed the finalization, delayed the finalization of it, is that um, the 153, those are people that were registered mm -hmm. when the fire broke out. And so what then happened was that uh, that same night, people were, uh, names were recorded in uh, um, uh, names were recognized and so on, and then we then had to to say, okay, we need we need to put up 153 houses. But Standard Bank came on board and say we have uh, the uh, buy a brick uh, project, uh, which we are uh, actually uh, in collaboration with the uh, Sheikh Dollars Federation. Um, if there are Sheikh Dollars Federation members, we can give these funds to build houses because I think the agreement was of the buy, buy, buy a brick is that uh, Sheikh Dollars Federation members. So um, we then engage uh, our approach Sheikh Dollars and say, okay, from the 153 uh, victims, fire victims, how many of those can you uh, identify Sheikh Dollars Federation members? And uh, they identified 53 out of the 100, and, uh, no, 32, not 53. Out of the, out of the 153, 32 were uh, Sheikh Dollars Federation members. So then uh, it, it was then agreed that, okay, 32 houses will come, will be funded by the Sheikh Dollars without the funds from the Central Bank, and 121 will then be funded by government. According to the Swapo Manifesto of 1989, it will set up a public housing sector to help provide appropriate and affordable shelters for all sections of the Namibian population. Such a public housing sector will be charged with the responsibility for a rapid expansion of housing construction activities in the country. Housing construction for the lower income groups will receive state subsidies. State support will also be given in the form of appropriate housing legislation, giving access to various forms of credit to enable individuals of land groups to build and improve their own houses. There will also be provision for building material loans and crash training programs for construction workers and artisans in order to ensure the successful implementation of the government's housing policy and programs. Um, uh, so we finalized that uh, some of the I think some of the 32 houses were already built uh, which was just on the site where the all travel car was so they started putting it I think uh, uh, that's also when the president handed over some of those houses uh, and uh, but then we continued with uh, the 121 houses so then um, we, when we completed with the 121 houses, and of course we also completed the 31 houses, 32 houses of shade dwellers. We con constructed them all completed. Um, you know, we had to verify um, the, 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 uh, the, the houses with the, the, the list of people that are on, uh, the, the, the list of the, the people that are to, benefit from the houses and we 
after our verification, we saw that uh, there were some uh, uh, dis uh, discrepancies. And those, of course, which is uh, in such a uh, situation, there's always here and there, you know, you overlook and so on. And so we found out that um, uh, 20, 21 houses uh, or 21 people were excluded from um, the, the beneficiaries uh, to get houses. And these are now, for example, when the fire broke out, we counted the shakes, but we found out that in one shake there are four families and you cannot build one house for four families. So we had now to add more houses so that we give a family a house. Um, so those are the, the 21. And also some is that um, um, the person was locked, up, locked down in another region and was not recorded. Uh, and then you also found out that, that um, one check was rented out to somebody else and this person is, or maybe bought the sheikh uh, from another person. So there was those uh, issues that we had to, after our verification, we had to do iron out, and that's when we reconciled and we saw, okay, we need uh, 110, I mean, we need uh, 21 more houses. And that is exactly now what uh, I hope you were on the site. You see houses uh, being constructed that is now the additional uh, 12, 21 houses. And that is also what is uh, um, uh, delaying uh, the finalization of the project. Uh, that's uh, um, electricity services and the 12, um, 20, 21 houses that uh, still need to, 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 to be completed. The fact that most residents of Walfish Bay earn such meager salaries whilst the economy of the town is built on their backs is quite flabbergasting. People who have houses make Big guap renting out rickety shacks to those who have to acquire temporary shelters to match their seasonal occupation based on the industry that they work in. I asked the governor how the Swapo government plans to address this inequality. Yeah, you see, it's two things. First is that um, surely, uh, uh, especially with offers by in Swapo government, you have uh, everyday people coming in uh, from all different uh, regions coming in search of work, work, you know, employment, uh, because there's uh, hope that they will come and get, you know, so, because the region is an economic hub, uh, you know, there's so many uh, industries here and sectors, uh, fishing, uh, mining, um, logistics, tourism, uh, it's taking place here, so people come every day um, to, to, to the region. Um, and the, 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 the pace at which we are supposed to re reply or respond to the housing need is a bit slow. First is that Walfers by um, the Walfers by town itself, I think it's uh, quite old. Uh, it was established for let's say about thirty thousand people. Today you have about hundred and ten thousand in buffers by alone. Um, so first is that you have a, a challenge in terms of the space, buffers by. And you have a challenge in terms of infrastructure currently. If you go there, every day there's a pipe, uh, you know, sewage pipe, bus, uh, overflow and so on, uh, because the infrastructure is very old. Now, a um, number, of, number of years back, um, a, a, an extension was identified, Farm 37, and that is now to decongest people within um, the, the, the Vavas by proper area. And we are informed that uh, the size of Farm 37 is about uh, you know, twice as big as Vavas by proper. Yeah, um, and that is uh, towards the um, D7 and so on, uh, about seven kilometers outside uh, the pro proper part of the spire. Now, um, you know, the issue of providing uh, houses should not really be seen as a 
function of uh, Taubman alone. And that's also what I always in, uh, uh, engage or uh, speak to the other sectors. Like, for example, the people that are in sheds, these are people working for factories. And if one have to say that only government should come in and address, for example, in Waffles by the backlog, the list of people that are on, that are, that applied for houses, it's uh, more than 19,000. Now that government will not be able to do it alone in terms of pace, in terms of fund, funds, it's just not uh, possible. If we do it, it will take years to reach or to act, I mean, to uh, 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 get into, I mean, to, to, to reach that, uh, that, 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 uh, that place. And as, we are, as I'm saying, every day people are coming and, and coming. So uh, we are saying that factories, especially fishing companies, uh, apply for land, especially there at Farm 37, uh, apply for land and build houses for your people. Because these are the people that are in the shakes in Quisapont. They come from the factories every morning, go to the shack. While you as an MD or the manager goes to Lupisto, uh, <laughs> Lagoon, <laughs> Lagoon Miesa in nice, you know, uh, uh, what do you think? Uh, and you would want this person to come in the morning and be productive. According to the Swapo Manifesto of 1989, local government at regional, district, municipality and village levels will be called upon to support self-help housing projects and technical services in the form of land survey, water supply, electricity and sanitation. The central government will make provision for the upgrading of the administrative, managerial and technical capacity of the local government authorities to enable them to carry out this task. The government will also mobilize and encourage privately owned construction companies to contribute to the housing program through an incentive package.
And with that, it's a wrap. Thanks for watching.